Awesome. I'd like to hear about the trial. Awesome. Just uh, tell Zeke to park over there and he can step with his mom. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. You're pretty quiet today. Honk. Honk if you're awake. Okay, that's good, that's good. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Um, I just want to ask your cars, okay, because that's a part of the condition of being able to have a drive-up service. And we want to thank God we can worship sitting down or we can worship standing up. I prefer standing up, but you and the cars have to stay there. God bless you. Uh, honey, why don't you give them what God gave to you. Good morning, Kingsgate. Good morning, all of you out there that are watching us from Canada, from Bulgaria, from Korea. We are so blessed. We have the na Brazil. We have the nations that watch us and come, and we come and join together to worship. Yesterday, I was reading in the Word, and I was reading about the woman at the well. And after she said to the Lord, I perceive that you are a prophet, she said she had a question of him. And she said, we worship here on the mountain, and you Jews, you worship in Jerusalem. What, what's right? What do we do? And the Lord said to her, good woman, there will come a day when you will not worship on the mountain and we will not worship in Jerusalem, but we will worship with our hearts. Today we have come to worship with our hearts, not in a building because we are the church, we are the building, not on a mountain, not even in a car, but with every fiber of our being, we are here to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So let's give him a shout and a praise. Hallelujah!
Just acknowledge him right now in our hearts and minds. If you need him to make a way for you through this pandemic, economic crisis, confusion and uncertainty, right now remember he's the way maker and he is the promise keeper. Nobody can do those things like our God can, amen? So let's trust him right now. Let's let fear be gone from us. Let's even command the fear and anxiety to go in the name of Jesus. For he's come to give us life more abundantly. And that includes peace that passes all understanding. Because it doesn't make sense to have peace during these times. Amen. So let's trust him for everything that we're going to go through. We are going through. And also everything we have gone through that still has an impact today. Thank you, Jesus. It's great to see all of you here, even though I can't really see your faces. It's wonderful. Hallelujah. It's great to be together again. Yes. It's wonderful to be together again. And just as an announcement, next Sunday, we are having 
uh, Dr. Hong Yang and his wife Esther with us. Uh, Dr. Hong Yang and his wife Esther are from China. He was a member of the Chinese Communist Party and he was an officer in that party uh, to some degree. And he, did, uh, he had no idea of who Jesus Christ was. He said that he, they are told over there in China that a Bible is, is Western porno. And so he was not allowed to have a Bible. He got saved without hearing it preached to him. The Lord sovereignly came to him and, and somehow he heard about Jesus and he cried out to the Lord and the Lord saved his soul. He and his wife Esther are now evangelists and missionaries. They are um, living up in Tennessee and they're going to be with us next Sunday morning. Uh, Esther is going to be preaching here. Outside, uh, they're saying a 20% chance of rain. That's good enough for us. And then we're also going to have an evening gathering at 6 o'clock. If we need to move it a little bit earlier, we could go at 5. But we'll let you know about that. Because, uh, I mean, the sun will be setting a little bit before 7.30. Uh, we want to give uh, uh, Dr. Hong all the time that he needs. And I'll tell you, folks, this guy is a fireball. He is on fire for Jesus. You don't want to miss this. And he's going to be speaking uh, over at the Anchor Church in the morning, and, and his wife is going to be speaking here. I encourage you to come and be a part of that as well, because it's something that God is doing in a powerful way here in this nation and in this church. Also, uh, today, uh, this month is actually uh, is, um, uh, a month of awareness of child sexual abuse and child abuse in general. And uh, what's happening is, is that awareness has been uh, increasing of the heinousness of these acts of child abuse. And so um, uh, it's actually a blue month, meaning uh, in, uh, outside of the church, people were wearing uh, blue on Mondays. So it was called Blue Mondays. And then it began in 1996 in Texas that it was Blue Sunday. And churches began to um, announce it and, and make it known that we need to pray for the victims of child sexual abuse and child abuse in general. And so that's what we want to encourage you to do today is to pray for this need. Usually we'd have a video to show, but since we're outdoors, we'll wait and show it when we get back inside. That's how that's going to work there. So um, we'll be on live stream this coming Wednesday night. I'm going to be uh, continuing with a message on Joshua and crossing over. This is a time of crossing over for sure. And we want to know what we're crossing over into. So I really want to encourage you uh, to come and, and watch that on live stream. Uh, what do you think about the worship team? Don't you think they did a fantastic job? Yeah. Yes. Uh, if there's a Dr. Charles in the house, is there a Dr. Charles in the house? Uh, Dr. Charles, we need you up here, brother. There's somebody who's well that needs a doctor. Okay, he's coming. Oh, here he is. He was hiding in his car. Yeah, you were looking at the wrong vehicle. I was looking at the vehicle over there when he was with his children over here, within his wife's car. I love this brother. Uh, this morning, didn't we have a hot time of prayer yes. on the phone? <laughs> I want to encourage you folks, get a prayer partner. I'm telling you what, when we get together, we have a prayer meeting that just we don't want to quit, but we have to. And you will be so blessed by getting in, in agreement because Jesus said where two or three are gathered in his name. And if you shall ask anything in his name, it shall be done of your father who is in heaven. And if you gather in his name, he's there in the midst of you. You're going to have a greater, stronger presence of Jesus and you're going to have more answers to prayer. Doc, um, what you got for the folks today? Jesus is good. Amen. Praise God. Uh, thank God for this good day. Yeah. It's the day that the Lord has made, and we'll rejoice and be glad. So in agreement with rejoicing, I want you to give me a long hung. Hung. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Thank you. That's okay. God bless you. We're trying not to pollute the atmosphere with sound pollution. So <laughs> the Lord is good. Uh, Bible says we should make a joyful noise unto the Lord, and that's what you guys just did. Um, this morning, we want to proceed with our worship, even as we receive our offering. Uh, the Bible says we should prepare an offering unto the Lord. That's what we've done. And for all of us around here today, we are just so thankful 
that the Lord has given us this day. It is a good day. And I want yeah. to encourage you that do not be afraid. Know that the Lord God Almighty is with you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So in the midst of the crisis, God is with you. Whatever it may be, he is with you. So you are not alone. He is with you. And we are in this together. And I believe that this pandemic shall also pass away. Because Jesus is God. So this morning, I want you to kind of hold your offering and begin to talk to God in, with your offering. Just talk to God. How thankful you are and how good he is. The Bible says he will bless our barns. He will bless the fruit of our hands. He will bless the fruit of our bodies. And this morning, we're here to testify of his goodness. So begin to talk to God and begin to bless him with your offering. Let's talk to God. Father, we want to thank you this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we have been accepted in Jesus. Amen. Not because of our identity or because of where we came from, but because of the blood of Jesus. And because of the blood, Lord, we have access to you, the king of the universe, the most eternal king, the glorious one, the one that sits on the center of the universe. Amen. The one that called the things that are not as though they are. You are the God who have accepted us just as we are. And this morning, Lord, we bring our offerings to you with thanksgiving and gladness. And for those of us, Lord, that are unable to provide or to, to give an offering, I pray, Lord, that you release bountifully upon them. So next time around, when we meet like this, they will be able to testify of your goodness. Amen. And this morning, thank you for the offering. Bless this offering, Lord. Yes. Bless the hand that provided. Bless that household that is releasing this abundance to you. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that your power will activate every account and every financial situation in this congregation. Hallelujah. That your power will cause a stirring in their finances. That people's finances shall begin to see a supernatural turnover. Because our account, or our economy, is not of this world. It's of Jesus. Amen. Because we operate in the account Amen. and the economy of Jesus. Therefore, Lord God Almighty, may it be so in the lives of your people that today your people will know that the God of heaven has not changed. Thank you in Jesus' name for accepting our offerings. Amen. God bless you as you give. Amen. Thank you, brother. Now you know why I like to pray with him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. See, folks, you and I are to become like live coals off the altar of God. That's in Isaiah chapter 6, where Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips and among a people of unclean lips. And then the angel of the Lord brought a live coal off of the altar and it touched his lips and he was made clean. Well, we have the blood of Jesus now that makes those lips and words of ours to be clean. So we should speak life. And I just sensed as I walked up here, the Lord said, tell the people there to be a coal off the altar of God. Because your words and mine are to be sanctifying. Your words and mine are to be purifying. They are to be making holy and powerful and releasing captives by the things that we break with our words, according to our declarations, according to the word of God, according to faith. So I want to encourage you today. Somebody here right now needs to particularly hear this or a few of you. That you are to be, we are to be live coals off the altar of God. We are to be burning, every burning. We are to have not just an intermittent um, visitation of the Holy Spirit. We are to be fully immersed in the Holy Spirit. We are to be on fire for God. And our words are to bring life. So I want to encourage you during this pandemic, be careful the words that you speak and who you say them to and how you say them, what attitude you say them with. Amen? Because God is looking and watching over our words to perform them. And let's give him something of faith that he can really step into and, and bless. Amen? I'll tell you, I hope somebody will come and take this check from me. It's getting hot. Thank you, Jesus. Be right there. Okay, David, I see that. Thank you, Jesus. I know there's a number of you that have testimonies. That God is doing things above and beyond 
what you've asked for or thought. I want to ask you to, to give us a call and let us know what those testimonies are. Then we can share them. We can share them over live stream. We can give them out to others uh, to, to encourage them when, when we get together with them. I guess I'm supposed to stand behind the pulpit here. Sam's telling me now. No. We're okay, Sam? You're good. All righty. Thank you. This is Sam Alexander, <laughs> our, our uh, sound and video technician for outside activities. At least he is for the last two. Amen. And we appreciate you, Sam. Amen. And we appreciate our violinist who was new with us today. Yes, anointed. We've got a woodwind section, folks, of a cello and a violin. Isn't God good? Thank you, Jesus. At least we do for today. And bongos. What's that? And bongos. Oh, and, yeah, and uh, bongos. bongos. Or congos, uh, whatever you call them. Thank you, Jesus. Well, the reason I brought up a second Bible, just in case, you know, I'm not going to be overly long-winded today, uh, but I need something to hold the pages of the Bible down for what I'm going to use. It's a little bit windy today, but we prayed and asked God, to um, give us uh, his kind of weather. And this is what he gave us. Isn't he good? Thank you, Jesus. So let's pray as we go into his word. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for grace and mercy. We want to thank you, Lord God, that your presence is here. And you are very near and dear to our hearts. So we ask you, Lord, to speak to each one of us. Let the word become flesh inside of us. Lord, we ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you to enlighten the eyes of our hearts, and we will forever be grateful and thank you for everything that you've done for us through Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Wind's whipping up here. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you, Lord. If you have your Bibles, would you, or your cell phones, smartphones, would you open them to the book of Haggai. This message is entitled, We Need a Move of God's Spirit. And that's including this church, but also in our nation. As we look around us at the state of the world, with over 190 nations affected by this coronavirus pandemic, and the world economy basically in shambles, almost going in reverse it seems, we find that the climate is right for serious changes to be made in how, the way we function. These are the times, folks, that we search our hearts and we decide about change. What kind of change do we need? Well, I believe the book of Haggai helps to provide that. You see, things were, were not so great in the days of the prophet Haggai. It's not that there was a limit limited amount of abundance of prosperity. We're going to see that in a minute when we read. You see, it was Jeremiah had prophesied that it would be 70 years until the rebuilding of the temple, until it was completed. And that happened right here at this time in Haggai. Exactly 70 years were completed as mentioned by the prophet Jeremiah. And we see that God knows what he's doing and he reveals it to the prophets. He still does it today. And we want to hear what the word of the Lord has to say. So it says here, in the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says, The time has not come, the time has, that the Lord's house should be built. And I just want to pause there and say this. Notice that the Lord does not say in verse 2, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, My people say. You see, God is looking at what you and I say. He says, this people say, it is the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. If the people were saying the time has come that the Lord's house should be built, the Lord would say, my people say. You see, God wants us to be in agreement with his will on earth as it is in heaven. And that is who his people are. His people are those who obey him. His people are those who will suffer for him when necessary. 
And we see going on here in verse, we see that the people were a number of things. What they were, were they were selfish and they were sluggish. Wow. The people were selfish, they were sluggish, and they neglected the service of God. There's times, folks, when, when even the flesh of strong spiritual people can ascend and take root. And we've got to all check our hearts and see if we've become selfish or sluggish or, or if we've fell back from the service of the Lord. Because these are times that are going to require greater uh, advancement in the spirit in order to change the society in which we live. The way America's been going, folks, it's going to take a supernatural move of the remnant. Those that are really dedicated to God to move out in the spirit. And that's what God is saying, I believe, through this message today. What are we willing to let go of so that he can have more of us? The Lord of hosts here is Jehovah both in verse 1 and in verse 2. And in Hebrew, Jehovah is God's covenant title, referring to his unchangeableness and the guarantee of his faithfulness in keeping his promises to his people. Folks, God is faithful to his word. He can never lie. He's a promise keeper, the way maker as we sang. And that's because he's Jehovah, a covenant keeping God. So you can count on him, but can he count on us? By grace, he can. And we're going to look at this is not a works message. This is not a message that you're saved by works. What it is, is it's a message that you're blessed in covenant with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. But at times we can act in the flesh instead of pressing in to make a difference in the earth that God is wanting to give us dominion over in an experiential way. We see that he says, my people. America needs a move of God's people. America needs a move among God's people. Amen. Because America is not going to change and the nations of the earth are not going to change until the people of God come Amen. into the fullness of their Amen. stature and image in Christ. Amen. And I believe that's the kind of day we're living in. This pandemic is here and this economic collapsing is here for a reason. It's not sent by God. I don't believe he sent it. The Bible, Jesus said in John 10 verse 10, for the thief comes not, but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. And what's happening with, through this pandemic is there's stealing, there's killing, and there's destruction. But Jesus said, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And so therefore, when God wants to give life more abundantly, not only to his body, but to those that are to become a part of his body. See, otherwise, we could just say, let's sit home and do nothing until the plague is passed. We don't have to do anything. Let God have his destructive work and his judgment work in the earth. And then we can do something when things get a little better physically. But I don't believe that's what he wants us to wait for. In verses 3 through 6, it says this. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses and this temple to lie in ruins? These paneled houses, it means the people not only had the cedar on the walls of their houses like they had in the temple, in, their, in the holy place, holy of holies, but they also had their ceilings were paneled. I mean, they had it happening. And, but they were not looking after the temple of God. One of the things we need to understand today is the temple is not a building. We know that. The Word of God says that. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. And the body of Christ is corporately the temple of the Holy Spirit. Worldwide as well as locally, like houses of God like this, we are a community of covenant presence of God as a church. So what? let, me, let us ask this question. Are we in keeping with the covenant that God has for us in taking care of our personal temples? Are we worshiping him and letting the Holy Spirit fill us? Or are we filling ourselves at times with things that we know are impure or do not advance the kingdom of God and truth in our hearts and minds? The other thing is, what about the house of God? Our commitment there and what God wants to do with each one of us who have everybody has a gift to give. Are we operating in the gift that God has for us to be used in the covenant community of the local assembly? Stepping up, God will find a place and make a way 
for each and every one. And then corporately throughout the earth, the temple of God. Are we helping to pray and support missionaries and help advance Jesus' uh, ministry through people on other sides of the world and other parts of, the, uh, of this nation even? God wants us to act in unity with each other. So as we go on, it's not bad to have a beautiful home. And it's not bad to have personal wealth. But it's not the best if we do not use what we have to advance the kingdom of God. We see here, he says in verses 3 through 6, Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You have so much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Now that may not be our case here in our lives, so much as there's a spiritual hole in our bag. It's like we pray a lot, but do we get the results? I believe that God wants us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto us, it says in Matthew 6, verse 33. So we're going to seek the kingdom more and more, even in this pandemic, I believe. And then it goes on. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. And that literally means set your heart on your ways. Like take a look at how we're doing things and say, Lord, what is it? I'm reflecting and I'm looking at what do I do and why do I do it? And Lord, help me to break out of patterns that are fruitless or are, are not advancing the kingdom. See if God's spirit bears witness with your spirit and what God wants to do. I believe that God will use you. God will use your life more significantly. You're going to get words of knowledge. You're going to be prophesying over people. You're going to be uh, setting people free by the things that you see in them spiritually and encourage them to be in the Lord. God has a powerful outpouring of the spirit upon this house. It's even here right now. It's already taking place. It's that it's not only a third great awakening for the world, but it's also a great visitation is on his body. He goes on to say, consider your ways and then go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified. You see, it was time for the temple to be completed according to the word of the Lord. The 70 years had come and God's word was not going to be held. It was not going to be fulfilled unless the people got about the work of the Lord. So there was a prophetic word at stake by the prophet Jeremiah. So the Lord was telling them. That this needs to be completed. And so he tells them practically what to do. Go up into the mountains and get wood. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts? Because of my house that is in ruins, while every one of you turns, runs his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you withhold the dew and the earth withholds its fruit. For I called for a drought on the land and the mountains, on the grain and the new wine and the oil, on whatever the ground brings forth, on men, on livestock, and on all the labor of your hands. I believe, folks, those days are over. I believe those days are coming to an end. I believe we are not going to labor and not see fruit that remains in this house. I believe it's time for the body of Christ to be so mobilized by the Holy Spirit and the promises of God that we are going to see people coming from the north, south, east, and west, not just into this house, not just here. They're going to be coming all over this nation. People are going to be seeking the living God. They're reassessing their priorities. They've been saying, look, I've done all these things. I've worked so hard. I've done everything I could. I had my 401k. Now it's wiped out. My business of three generations is down the tubes. What am I supposed to do? It's that they're going to seek the living God. They're going to come to know Jesus as their Savior. And you and I are going to be a part of that process, folks. We are going to be a part of hearing what God is saying and listening to what people are saying to us and having an answer for the hope that lies within each one of us. When they say, where do you get this hope from? Where do you get your faith and love from? You're going to be out, have an opportunity to tell them about Jesus. Amen. You're going to be able to tell them about a covenant community that we all need to have and we all love to be a part of. In verse 12, the people's obedience. 
Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltiel, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. This is it. They obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God had sent him. And the people feared, they reverenced the presence of the Lord. Folks, this is extremely important, what we're reading here in this verse 12. You see, the prophet was speaking to the priest and he was speaking to the governor. He was speaking to the political. He was speaking to the religious uh, realms. And they were getting in line. They were coming in agreement. And this was the agreement of the leadership that was going to affect the whole nation. And bring the prophetic word to pass. We need to understand also. I remember Ken Malone was here on October 19th, 2011. That is like um, eight and a half years ago. And he... I underlined those words, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God in verse 12. And this is what he said. He said, we have to not let, he says, we have to do this ecclesia thing and not put it on the shelf. You see, it's real easy that you can hear about the ecclesia, the, the called out legislative assembly of the Lord Jesus, who are citizens of heaven, who are called out to make decrees and declarations of what God wants on earth as it is in heaven and what he does not want on earth as it is in heaven. It's really easy to hear the teaching on this and not put it into practice, but to put it on a shelf. God doesn't want that on a shelf. He wants us to study it out and be a part of it in a big way to change the earth in which we live. And it says in verse 13, Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, spoke the Lord's message of the people to the people, saying, I am with you, says the Lord. This is so very important. I am with you, says the Lord. This is the same thing the Lord said to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Jesus said at the end of Matthew 28, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. God wants his covenant people to know he will never leave us nor forsake us. This is very important in stepping out into the unknown in stepping out to face fears that you may have had for many years in your life and to say fear you're coming down because the presence of the lord is with me fear you've got to go for my family line in the name of jesus poverty you go in jesus name i'm stepping out and i'm going to get that that job that opportunity that god has promised me i'm going to write that book i'm going to create that invention i'm going to do what the lord wants me to do and i'm going to stop thinking that i can't do it that was the thinking before God was with me in a covenantal way. I used to think like that. Amen? Amen. So now he is with us and we thank God for that. You see, leadership wisely obeyed the prophet. And this is a reverence here that leads to obedience. Folks, when we have the reverential fear of the Lord, it will lead us to obey him and do what he wants. And that is what God is looking for. Will we obey him? Yes, I say Kingsgate will. I say all of you watching by live stream will. It's the call of God is to obey him. Jesus said in John 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah. Amen. If you love me, keep my commandments. Because you see, folks, keeping the commandments of God, keeping the love commandments, first and foremost, is the way that we know and show that we love him. Just to say we love him with lip service, but not to do his will. Matthew chapter 7 says, those who say to me, Lord, Lord, only they will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. It is those who do the will of my father who is in heaven. And so therefore it's real important. So the Lord stirred up. Isn't this interesting? So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel and the son of Shiltiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. See, there was a remnant, folks, and there's a remnant today who follow the will of God. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. It took a month from the time that the prophet spoke the message until they actually got started doing the work. There was a time lapse and there's often a time lapse in our lives. So wait upon God and find out what's stopping us from obeying him 
But then get about and do it. In chapter 2, I want to move on here. Oh, where, where it says, I am the Lord. I am with you, says the Lord. Matthew Henry said, those who work for him have him with them. And if he be for us, who can be against us? Isn't that interesting? If God's presence is with you because you are with him, you've made covenant with him through Jesus Christ. If God be for us, who can be against us? You know all those fears you have about what might happen if you do this, that, and the other thing? It is time to say, pass over, devil. Yeah. You're a liar in the father of lies. Yeah. I am not afraid of you because God is with me and you cannot be against me in a way that is going to stop me from doing what God wants me to do. Amen? Yeah. So we're going to declare the will of God. We're going to actually step into it in this new beginning, this crossing over. Because we're not going to be afraid of what man might do to us. Amen. I mean, we'll count the cost. I mean, we've been obeying by not going into the, into the building, uh, you know, and assemble together until the governor lifts that. We've been doing it God's way. And God has decided to send us outside at a time of year when it's comfortable. Amen. You see, in verse 14, the prophet's message was directly in line with the activity of God. God wanted this to be done and the people of God lined up with it. And then God stirred up the people. He stirred up in the people's cold hearts a fresh desire to do his will. See, sometimes, folks, that's what we need. We've got a cold heart towards things of God. We've just kind of maybe got weary or we've gotten distracted. And then what happens is we need a fresh stirring of the spirit. And that's what I'm talking about today. The, um, the body of Christ in America needs a fresh stirring of the spirit of God. That's why we're putting things online like the move of God in Brazil and the people out in the streets at night praying on their knees and worshiping God. Powerful stuff that God is doing in other countries as well as here. And you see the outcome of the prophetic word and the stirring of the people's spirits, the, pe the builders began working again with renewed energy. You see, the prophetic word from God came. The people considered their ways. They lined up in agreement, and then renewed energy came from the stirring of the Holy Spirit. That's what's happening right now. Go When you leave here, don't be afraid to get stirred by the Holy Spirit. Even right now in your cars or online on the Internet, don't be afraid to be stirred by the Spirit of God in your seats or wherever you're at. He wants to stir us. Today, we could say the people came to church meetings when the doors were open, and they fully attended the prayer meetings. They were giving like there was no tomorrow and helping wherever it was needed. I remember up in um, Toronto with the airport Christian uh, fellowship up there back in the early 90s, 1992, when the spirit of the Lord came so mightily um, into the meetings there as a, a minister from St. Louis um, came into after Rodney Howard Brown, this man was at Rodney Howard Brown meeting in Florida. Then he went back to his home church in St. Louis. Randy Clark is his name. Then Randy was called to go up to Toronto to the Airport Christian Fellowship. When Randy got in there, the Spirit of God for just a couple or three meetings started moving so powerfully that they wouldn't let him go. They said, Randy, uh, we need you for some more meetings here to continue this, what God has started here through you. And so uh, he called up his wife and he gingerly said, honey, I hope it's okay with you, but God's doing something powerful and they don't want me to leave. And so he stayed on. And the move of God has lasted from about 1992 till 2020 and it's still going on there. It, uh, the people were getting so filled with the Holy Spirit. They were so stirred by God that they said one pastor came from Guelph, Ontario. I remember these uh, words because we were living in Canada at the time. This pastor came from Guelph, Ontario to those meetings in Toronto. And this pastor got an impartation of the Holy Spirit and he went back to his church that was lackluster, sluggish. People weren't giving in the offering as much. They weren't showing up to work and help out at the church like they needed. The volunteers were lacking and missing. The next thing you know, the Spirit of God came from off of that pastor onto the people. The Spirit of God stirred the hearts of the people. And the next thing you know, they had so many 
helpers, they couldn't find enough work for all the people to do. They had so much money that they didn't have enough things to spend it on that were priorities in their church. And that's what will happen when the Spirit of God will get a hold of a people. I believe that time is here, not only for Kingsgate Worship Center, but from wherever you're at watching on live stream or listening to this message. I really believe that the Holy Spirit is saying it's now is the time. Now is the time. This is the year and this is the place. Our hearts, our assembly and yours, wherever you're from, God wants to do it now. In chapter 2, I don't want to cut this off yet because I think there's still... We're not going to do the whole chapter, but these are, these are uh, two parts that need to be spoken. The coming glory of God's house. This is very important, folks. The glory of God's house that's on its way. In the seventh month, on the 21st of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltio, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people. There's that word remnant again. Like Dr. Don Lynch likes to say, it doesn't take everybody, but it starts with somebody. Are you one of those somebodies today? That you could put your name into that word remnant. I'm part of the remnant of God's people. That I am, am pressing into the things of God. Willing to do his will. His way. In his time. And it says. Who is left among you. Who saw this temple in its former glory. And how do you see it now. In comparison with it. Is this not in your eyes as nothing. You see there were people that were alive. That saw the glory of Solomon's temple in its original state when they were children. And then it was destroyed. And now they see the rebuilt temple which was not equal to Solomon's. This temple would be around until Herod would beautify it around 40 BC. And still it was nothing in comparison quite like Solomon's temple as you could imagine. I know it's in here somewhere. It's blowing around. That's okay. Thank you, Jesus. So the people were discouraged who had known what it was like. And they probably told a lot of people. They probably passed the word around. This is nothing like it used to be. I mean, you should have seen when I was a young boy or a young girl. I mean, this thing was spectacular. And so there was, a, there was some disillusionment and disappointment. But look at verse 4. Yet now be strong. There's times when you're disillusioned, discouraged, disappointed, or depressed when you've got to speak strength into your heart. You've got to say, body, mind, be strong. Now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord. And be strong, Joshua, son of Jehoshadak, the high priest. And be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord. And work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. Notice, though the Lord had chastened them in chapter 1, he had chastened them over their transgressions and their wrong attitudes. His faithfulness does not fail. He says, I am still with you. And this is so important. It's in the book of Joshua that he's with them. It's here in Haggai that he's with them. And it's in the New Testament that he's with us. Very, very important to practice the presence of God. Practice his presence. Whenever you're facing a challenge, Take him to that challenge with you. Whenever you're going to a doctor to hear a report that you think might be really bad, take the presence of the Lord with you. And we know that you do it in a, in a presence way, in a spiritual way, but go with a consciousness. Talk to him about it and what's going on. Now, verse 5. According to the word of the Lord. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. <laughs> so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. Amen. Folks, this verse 5 is the most important verse in the book of Haggai when it comes to understanding the Holy Spirit. Notice the three elements here. First of all, the Holy Spirit is the same Spirit who launched the church of Israel in the Old Testament 
and he would be with them throughout. And he's also the same spirit of God who launched the church into existence as his people continue to be with him to this day. The one who provided special empowerment for the church's past offers identical empowerment today and tomorrow that he gave at Pentecost. So folks, this is the same Holy Spirit who was working here in Haggai's day, in the founding of Israel, even before that, who brooded over the waters in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. He's the same God who's here with you and me today. So we can step out, be encouraged, and do what God is saying to do. And he tells them here, he says, there's God's spirit interacts with his people's spirits in order to get the work completed by doing three things. According to the word that I covenanted with you. Holy Spirit is a vital part of our covenant with God. So have communion with the Holy Spirit. Have a covenant time together with him. Get to learn his voice. Get to know who he is. Get to trust him. Let him tell you words of knowledge, gifts that he wants to unwrap in your life through you and help others to unpack in their lives. Let yourself be an instrument of God today. Let yourself be somebody you don't even know you are yet. That's called a self-discovery, but it's a, a, a Christ self-discovery. Amen? Amen? A lot of times when we discover what our personal selves are like, we get discouraged. We get timid. But in Christ, we've got a, 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 a identity that needs to be revealed to us that is full of faith and full of power. Next, number two, my spirit remains among you. You'll notice that's in here. According to the word I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. He's the same spirit that delivered Israel out of Egypt. He's the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. He's the same spirit that caused the disciples in the upper room to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. He's the same spirit that does miracle signs and wonders and confirms the word of God and speaks through prophets. There was a prophet who passed away a few years ago by the name of Kim Clement. He spoke a word back in 2016. Last night, um, if you want to hear it, Dr. Lance Walnow gave this message on, about um, Kim Clement's prophecy about North Korea. And this is when the fellow by the name of Wormbeer, he was a 20-something young man, 22-year-old man or something, and he went over to North Korea on a trip with others. And while he was there, he saw a... North Korean flag was either laying down or it was up on a wall and he took it as an article, memento, and he got caught. And what they did to him was horrific. Some think he was given a lobotomy. He, he was sent back in a vegetative state in, in a coma and he lived a little while after that before he died. We think he was experimented on And uh, anyway, two months before that happened, that he went, went over there and, and got tortured and came back in a coma, Kim Clement prophesied about North Korea. He prophesied that the head of North Korea was dead in a coma. And the day was coming when that would actually happen. And that North and South Korea after that, would eventually be joined as one. They would be one nation again. In fact, Pyongyang, which is the capital of North Korea, is where the outpouring of the Holy Spirit first came to the Korean Peninsula. And now it is the capital of the hermit kingdom, the dark kingdom of North Korea. But anyway, we now find that Kim Jong-il, after having heart surgery, Recently, he has been unseen for two two-week periods. And people believe that something went awry after the surgery, after the heart surgery. He was in ill health, overweight, I believe he was a chain smoker, and he 
He didn't live right. And so it's possible that right now he's in a coma. And he power was given over to his sister to take his place. Should anything happen to him, she is his successor. She's in her early 30s. Please be praying for her. But anyway, the prophet Kim Clement foresaw this back in 2016, four years almost before it actually happened. And so God does reveal to prophets, not that they're always right, but they are to be listened to and weighed what they say in the spirit. So as we bring this to a close, now my notes are upside down. They don't teach you how to do this in Bible school, how to preach outside with notes. And finally, after, according to the word that I covenanted with you, number two, my spirit remains with you. The third word from the spirit of God is do not fear. This is a big thing we need to hear today. Do not be afraid. Whenever Jesus would appear amongst his disciples after he had raised, he would say to them, do not be afraid. Because fear was an obstacle to his revelation to them. Let Holy Spirit's presence have full access to your heart and drive out fear with his perfect love. Amen. So now God's final intervention into history is found in verse 6 through 9. And I just want to quickly read this because it's the glory that God wants to find. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and the land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. You see, folks, the nations of the earth are being shaken. They're being shaken right now as we are alive. They are being shaken by the spirit of the living God to know whether they're, they're being weighed in the balance and seeing if they're being found wanting or not. We don't want our nation of America or wherever you're at right now to have your nation found wanting after it's been weighed in the balance, like in Daniel's day for Babylon. And I will shake all nations and they shall come to the desire of all nations. That is capitalized there, desire all and nations, because that's talking about a person. It's the Messiah. They shall come when this shaking takes place. Right before the last days happen, there's going to be this great shaking. And the people are going to come to the desire of all nations, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I will fill this temple with glory. That temple, folks, is talking about the kingdom of God people. The people that are the remnant, the people that are filled with the Holy Spirit, that God will fill this temple with glory. Arise, shine, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you, it says in Isaiah 60, verse 1. It is time for the church to arise. The glory of the Lord is already upon us. His name is Jesus, amen? He is here. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. That's a good reason to tithe right there. That's a good reason to give up your substance. Is because all of it's his. Amen. The glory of this latter temple. This is talking about the church. This is talking about the body of Christ. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former. Yes, this is not talking about the one that would be around when Jesus walked the earth, that was not Solomon's. That was a lesser temple. But he's saying this temple that he sees in the last days shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. If God be with us, not only does it not matter who's against us, but if God be with us, peace is with us. Amen. 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 So folks, there's no need to fear if you have God in your life, if God is near. There's no need to be afraid, but you can trust him. So what I want to ask you to do is I want to ask you to be strong and Holy Spirit filled. Be God strong. Amen. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, as it says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Also, don't be idle. Don't be idle, but be busy for the Lord. Let the Lord do the work through you that he wants to have done in the earth because we're not only called to be saved folks but we're not left down here so that we can die and then go to heaven we are here to be kingdom impactors Amen. we are here 
to give the devil a run out of town. Amen. That's why we're here. They set captives free. The same, the same uh, mandate that Jesus had on his life is on ours that you find in Luke chapter 4. We see here also, trust and obey the Lord daily. Amen. For this new house of glory is to be filled with the glory of another and that another is the Holy Spirit. So right now, wherever you're at, watching or sitting in your car or standing up as an usher, I want to ask you, would you just bow your head for a minute? Would you let the Holy Spirit impact your life? Would you let faith arise and yield yourself to the king and his kingdom? Would you let go of thoughts that you're not worthy, that you're inferior, that you're not going to amount to anything if that's been your lot and begin to track with God who will stir your heart right now. He's stirring hearts. Let him have his way. Let him dictate what he, who he wants you to be. Let him reveal to you the work that he's called you to do. Right now, let the river of God run through you. Let God's spirit overtake you and bless you and keep you in all your ways. That you have a faith-filled, positive future, not a down-trending, negative future if you're in Christ. Now, if you're not a believer yet in Jesus and you need him in your heart, I want to encourage you to ask him in. I want to encourage you to invite him to be your Lord and Savior where you come into covenant with him. He's already enacted the covenant with the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. His broken body and blood shed effected his covenant so that you and I can enter in to his body his body, his side was ripped open by a spear and out poured blood and water. The fact that it had separated like that proved that he was actually dead. So I want to encourage you to ask Jesus into your heart right now. If you're saying, Pastor, I don't have him in my life, but I need him and I want him. Casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you, it says in the Psalms. So would you pray this after me and mean it with all your heart sincerely? Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I know that I'm a sinner and I need my sins washed away. Thank you, Jesus, that you shed your blood for the forgiveness of my sins. I repent of all those sins. I turn from my wicked ways and I turn to you, Father God. I ask you, Jesus, to put your Holy Spirit in me. Fill me with Holy Spirit. And I will live for you and follow you all the days of my life until I come to your holy heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Glory. Thank you. Amen over there, it says, the sun says. <laughs> hey, if you did that and you're here on this property today, if you invited Jesus in, um, I would like to know that. Uh, would you just come up to me? I'll be standing up here at the end. And I would like to know that you made a decision for the Lord and we can talk about helping you in that way. God bless you. We'll be online this coming Wednesday at, uh, at 630. Uh, please join us. And also don't forget that this is Blue Sunday and pray for the children that have been abused, children that are sexually abused, trafficked and things like that. It's important that we lift 
all of our uh, people up to the Lord and pray for the first responders, the doctors, nurses, and caregivers on the front lines of this Corona uh, virus pandemic. Uh, pray that God would make them, keep them strong. And also for the people that are sick from it, pray for them as well as the opening of our, of our cities and our state uh, by governor Tate Reeves here in Mississippi. Pray for our governor, bless him and pray for our president and bless him too in Jesus name. God bless you. See you again soon. We love you. Amen. <laughs>